Hello and welcome back. This is David from the Personal Finance Squad. We just finished section 5.3, buying in bulk. Yes, we're talking about the warehouse clubs of the world for the most part. Is it better to buy from the warehouse club as opposed to the grocery store and a one-on-one -on -one apples to apples product comparison? And in most cases, the answer is yes. However, grocery bills are way beyond the warehouse clubs and we need to look deeper. So in fine fashion, as we always do in our chapters, we need to look to the granular level before we make decisions. So that leads us to section 5.4, which is mitigating costs. And this section right here is kind of a throw in only to say this, that it needs to be mentioned. This is more of a uh, little, little sheet to go off of. These are obvious things that you have probably already done in your life. And if you're a student in this case, maybe not so much, but nevertheless, these always, or they're always nice to have reminders of things that we need to do. And I can tell you right off the bat, there's people who are better at doing things than other people, and certainly there's people who are way better than me than using coupons. I am a horrible coupon person, for example. In fact, I never use a coupon. It probably renders me as lazy. Now I can certainly say that things have not changed with coupons. There's certainly in newspapers, they're on product containers, and certainly online. Uh, online definitely. Even even the coupons you get from grocery stores now you can find them online. There's also Groupon as an online example. There's coupon websites out there that um, you can join if you want to put the effort in to, to, uh, to find ways to save more money. But you have to be willing to be a time consumer more than what a lot of people are willing to do, but there's certainly people out there who can take really clear advantage of it. Another drawback to couponing is the products are not always in the grocery list or the products are desired is a better way to say it. So let's say there's a certain peanut butter brand. Let's say I like Skippy Natural over Jif Natural. I don't have that in the coupon. I have to get the Jif. Do I want to buy that Jif? I probably don't. But now other people may be willing to say, listen, I get the same type of food for a better price, I'm buying it. And again, that's all based on the individual or the family, right? Certainly if you coupon and you're willing to buy products for those coupons that you have, you're gonna save money. So as much as I promoting budget in here and keeping money in your pocket, uh, we all have our limits. And always keep this in mind, especially for those who uh, don't have as much money and uh, budgets relative to income for what they make or what you may be able to afford. Couponing can be a very good value to you. Now, I wrote in here about a cheat sheet. We uh, we went ahead of here a little bit, but cheat sheet's another time-consuming thing. But with the, with phones today, you can take pictures or you can have you can use lists. There's all kinds of apps that do things with these days. So this is no different in a sense of saying, listen, like I might have walked into a Costco several times and I've been eyeing a TV for six months. And then I walk into a Best Buy or I see something uh, advertised somewhere. And I start getting a sense of, you know what, I kind of like this size of TV that has this a 1080p with a certain screen. Maybe they want the new ones that are curved or something. And I keep looking, I keep looking, I keep looking. And I start getting a little analysis in my head of kind of what I'm willing to spend and is it falling into my price range. So that's kind of no different than the cheat sheet here of a grocery bill. Might be certain things that you'd like to buy, and it's like, you know what? You could be one of those people who says, you know what? I only buy, I only, let's say, buy bananas when they're on sale. And that makes sense. And now often for bigger purchases in a grocery store, like you get to, you get to know things pretty well. You're like, like for example, I know at Costco, using them again, that I know that they sell in my region, turkey, ground turkey, for $2.58 a pack, and they sell them in four one pound packs. So I know what I'm getting there. And so I know comparatively, if I'm in a store such as Kroger and they sell it for more, I don't want to buy it. I don't see too many discounts at Costco, but sometimes stuff certainly comes off the price and you buy it. So you get to know the things that you purchase. And so sometimes you're like, hey, you know what? It's it, You don't even have to have a cheat sheet. Again, as we talk about over and over again, you get good at doing things in your budget because you do them over and over again. You get good practices. You'll know in your head when something looks like it's a good deal. So just keep an eye on things so that you can again, pick something off when it's right for you. Grocery discount cards, I mean, 
there's hardly not a card out there for almost any business these days to get into their club so that you can get points and they can send you offers and keep you engaged and try to get you to buy more stuff. But if you don't have a grocery discount card, for example, I've been to a Kroger and I've seen a bottle of wine for $16.99. In fact, I don't even know what the card is anymore, but I know the number. And if I don't type that uh, card in, then uh, I'm going to pay this $16.99. But if I type the card in, the bottle goes down to $8.99. So it's more of a force principle because if you're in there buying 10, 15, 12 items, whatever it may be, you're going to nail, you're going to jump on a, typically a third of those that have a, a Kroger price or an Albertsons price or a Piggly Wiggly price that is cheaper because you're into their club. So it's an obvious thing to do, but make sure that you you do that because, again, you're going to be giving money away that you shouldn't have to. Okay, so that's actually going to cut this section. It's a pretty short one, and we are going to cruise down here in the next one, building in structure and budget surplus. So, you know, in fine fashion, like I said earlier, we're very granular, and we are going to build out a plan for Jasper's budget like we do with all the other items to get it to be a fixed item. So we will see you there.